Now is a special time of year for a large number of people in the Northern Hemisphere Temperate Zone, where we gather together with family and friends, or don't, to celebrate making it through another year. But more importantly, it's a chance to witness Berlin's rarest meteorological event. Snow. Fortunately for those of us unfortunate enough to be living in Berlin and hoping to see snow this season, video games have us covered. If you've recently played Assassin's Creed Valhalla or God of War, you'll have likely enjoyed running through and painting shapes into the impressively realised snow. In this seasonal special, I'd like to talk about a few ways you might approach adding snow to objects and environments. First, we'll create deformable terrain, then we'll write a shader that adds snow to the tops of objects, and finally we'll set up a snowy particle system. So, let's make it snow. First, let's tackle the terrain. Starting in Blender, I'll create a 32 by 32 meter plane and subdivide it a ridiculous number of times. Ideally, we'd stick to something like one vertex every half meter and then dynamically tessellate the terrain at runtime, adding geometry where it's needed. But since we're going to be using Godot 3.2 for this implementation, tessellation won't be an option. If you're using something like Unreal Engine, then this won't be an issue. We'll need two materials to make this environment, snow, obviously, and dirt, to cut a little meandering path through it. We'll blend between these two materials using vertex colours, which can be painted directly in Blender by switching to mesh paint mode. Let's flood the whole mesh with red. This will represent our snow. Then let's cut a path through the snow by painting black. Finally, let's deform the terrain a little using the sculpting tools. You can lock deformation to the z-axis in the tool panel so that verts only move up and down. This is important to make sure our UVs don't become warped, resulting in non-uniform texel density on the terrain. We're done, so let's export that to Godot and start working on our shader. To quickly recap, the idea here is to blend between snow and dirt using the red vertex colour channel, and wherever we have snow we'll also want to raise the vertices of the mesh a little bit to give the snow some actual depth. I've grabbed some free snow and dirt textures from textures.com for this example. First let's write our fragment function. We can start by sampling all of our textures, we can also control how often our textures tile by multiplying our UV coordinates by a new parameter which I'll call UV scale. Then let's grab our snow mask from the red vertex color channel. Finally, we can blend between the two texture sets at the output using the mix function, with our snow mask as the coefficient. For our vertex function, we can just grab the snow mask again from the red vertex color channel and add this to the Y component of our vertex attribute, which will offset our verts along the Y axis, adding depth to the snow. To have better control over the result, I've also multiplied our snow mask by a new snow height parameter so we can control how deep the snow gets. Here's the result. It looks quite nice, but it's not interactive in any way. Objects in the snow will simply clip through it. What we really want is to recreate that dynamic, paintable snow we see in Assassin's Creed. So let's look at how we can add this. To keep things simple, let's focus on having a single object, a snowball, interact with the snow on the ground. First, we'll need to add a new viewport to the scene. This viewport will render out a black and white mask showing where the ball has been, updating every frame. The texture doesn't need to be large, in fact one pixel per vertex will do fine, so let's set the viewport size to 128 by 128. Let's then add a new sprite node as a child of this viewport, and use a radial gradient as the sprite texture. This orb will represent our snowball, and as it moves around it'll paint the viewport texture black. Then, in our shader we can multiply the snow mask by this paintable viewport texture to remove snow as the ball moves through it. To make this work, we also need to set our viewport clear mode to next frame. This will create the accumulating or painting effect we want to see as the orb moves around the viewport. Also check vertical flip, or the result will be upside down. I'm not entirely sure why. Next, we need to get that sprite following our ball around, so let's add a script to the viewport to control this. Let's expose a couple of export variables for our player path, which will point to the snowball, and our world extents, which will be the size of our world. Our world is 32 units by 32 units, and centered at the origin, meaning that our ball can be positioned anywhere between negative 16 and positive 16 units along the X and Z axes. We can easily remap this range to 0 to 1 by adding half of the world extents to the ball position, and then dividing the result by the world extents. 
To position our orb correctly, we simply multiply the result by the viewport's size. And there we go. The orb is now following the ball around, painting a trail into the viewport texture. Before going back to finish off the shader, we should add one more line to our script to tell our viewport texture that it should use bilinear filtering. This will give us much smoother results when we sample the viewport in our shader. Let's jump back into the shader now and add a new texture input for the dynamic snow mask. Plug in our viewport texture, multiply our existing snow mask by this new dynamic mask texture, and there we go, interactive snow. For the final version of the shader, I also sampled the snow height texture in my fragment function and overlaid this on top of the snow mask to break up the edges a bit and make it a little less perfect and a bit more realistic. Here's the overlay function I used. It's essentially the same thing as the overlay blend mode in Photoshop or Krita. So that's our terrain covered in snow. Now let's look at how we can add snow to props and objects in our scene. For this demo, I've just downloaded a couple of free samples from Megascans. First, let's set up a basic shader with all of the relevant texture inputs, plug in our textures, and make sure everything's looking good. It is. So let's see about adding snow to this rock. The goal here is to modify our shader to add snow to the tops of objects regardless of how those objects might be oriented. To do this, we'll start by getting the dot product of the object's normal and an up vector that points along the world y-axis. Our normals are in view space, so we also need that up vector in view space. And we can get it by multiplying the inverted camera matrix by a world space up, like this. Clamping the result between 0 and 1 will then give us a mask that we can use to blend between the object's textures and snow textures, just as we did for the terrain shader. Here's what that mask currently looks like. We can also multiply our up vector by a new parameter called snow amount. This will control how much the snow spreads across the object. Now to add the snow. First, let's add all of the new texture inputs we'll need. Next, rather than use the object's UV coordinates, snow will be projected onto the object using world space position. This will avoid any texture seams at UV shell boundaries and ensure that the snow texture tiles consistently across objects of different sizes and UV layouts. Let's start by getting the world space position of the pixel we're shading by multiplying the camera matrix by our view space position, here called vertex, and then create our world space UV coordinates by multiplying the world space X and Z by a new parameter which I've called snow UV scale. This will control the tiling of the snow. Now we can sample all of our new textures using our world space UVs and finally blend between the two texture sets at the output. Let's also raise our snow mask to the power of a new parameter we'll call snow softness, so we can control how sharp the edge of the snow will be. This is the result we get. It already looks good and behaves as intended, with snow being placed on top of the object regardless of orientation. But it also looks a bit simple, in part because we're only using the geometry normals for checking which parts of the object point upwards, when we might get a better result by also taking into account normal map details. So let's look at combining our normal map with our geometry normals. First, we need to unpack our normal map by multiplying it by 2 and subtracting 1. This remaps the values from between 0 and 1 to between negative 1 and positive 1. This will give us our normals in tangent space, but we need them in view space. Fortunately, Godot gives us the view space tangent and binormal vectors already, so we can get our view space normal map by multiplying the negative x component of our texture sample by the view space tangent and multiplying the y component by the view space binormal. Adding both results together then gives us our view space normal map. Now we have two sets of normals to work with, those from our geometry and those from our normal map, both in view space. There are lots of different ways to combine these. Probably the cheapest way is just to add the X and Y components of both sets together, keeping the Z component from our geometry normals, and then normalizing the result. There's a really good blog post by Colin Burr and Stephen Hill from 2012 all about different ways to blend normals together, which I'll link in the description. All we have to do now is update our snow mask to use the blended normals instead of the geometry normals, and there we go. All of that normal map detail is preserved in our snow mask. 
One final touch and it's done. If you remember our viewport texture from earlier, we can sample that again here, allowing our snowball to remove snow from the tops of objects. We'll need to take our world position again, remap it based on the world extents, same as before, sample the texture and multiply our snow mask by the result. And just like that, we can interact with the snow on objects as well. One last thing, and I think we can call this snowy demo complete. Let's add a new particle system and make it snow. This one's pretty straightforward. Let's paint a quick snow particle texture. Mine looks a bit like a ball of cotton wool, but we'll make it work. Add a new particles node, make it spawn quads, assign a new material and turn on billboarding, plug in our texture and we're almost done. Finally, let's crank the particle count, set the spawn position to a box that encompasses our world extents and give our particles a downwards initial direction with a bit of spread. Tweak the velocity until it looks nice and there we go. It's finally snowing, even if you're in Berlin, where it never snows. And that's it for this seasonal special. Hopefully there were some interesting takeaways for you in this video. If there were and you'd like to see more content like this, make sure you like and subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. If you'd like to grab the project files for this video, those will be made available, as always, via my Patreon page, linked in the description. Good riddance to 2020, and I wish you all a much improved 2021. Thank you very much for watching.